So lastly, I'm going to take a look at what happens when the conditions for the t-test are not met and we want to switch over to the Man Whitney U, which is the equivalent non-parametric test. I've turned that filter off, so I'm back to using all the data. So what I'm going to do is not something that they particularly looked at in the paper, but just by way of example, is take a look at um, is there a difference in hand grip strength between the genders? Now they do say in the paper that men on average um, do have, do tend to have stronger hand grip strength than women. So that would be what I would be expecting from this. So to start with I'll do the, go through the same process of looking at the charts. I'll just reset this. I'll do the box plot first and check for outliers. Um, so I'm going to look at hand grip strength and sex, that didn't drag in. And we've got a bit of a problem. So we do have a number of outliers here. If we wanted to go through it and check um, where these were coming from, we get these row numbers here. There's quite a few outliers. I don't think it would be advisable just to go through and delete them all. I think you should just keep them in. However, it does mean that perhaps the t-test is not the best choice. We might also want to look at that graph of normality. However, if you've got outliers just on one side, we already know that it's going to be pulling the mean up and it will also um, make the histogram look quite skewed to the right as well. So just to do those for the sake of completeness, I'll go back to histogram, take out condition, and pop in uh, gender, and we can see that it actually doesn't look that much different um, in all honesty to the plots we did before just because we've got that small sample size. So if I had this by itself with no outliers um, I probably would keep using the t-test uh, just by way of an example and because I know that we do have these outliers I'm going to go ahead and use the Man Whitney U. So to do the non-parametric testing in SPSS, there's no other assumptions we have to test. This is usually our fallback measure. If these assumptions are not met for the t-test, we can then fall back to the non-parametric and there are no additional assumptions that we need to meet. These are all listed under non-parametric tests. We have independent samples and we have a couple of objectives we can choose from. We're not going to use the customised one. So because we're not assuming that the, the data is normal, we might, well we definitely want to compare the distributions first. So even if they're not normal, are they similar? So compare the distributions across the groups. If you're unsure of what I'm doing here, I do recommend that you go to that layered statistics page and have a look where they talk you through some of these assumptions in more detail. In the fields, we are interested in hand grip strength and um, and sex, and that's it. You should just be able to run it from there. You'll notice that I didn't even have to choose the Man Whitney U. It actually does that for me. So you get quite nice output for the non-parametrics. We get the null hypothesis written out that the distribution is the same across the categories. It tells us that it's doing an independent samples Man Whitney U. It gives us a significance which is quite high and tells us what to do. So we have no evidence against the null hypothesis and we would accept that there is no difference in the shape of these distributions. So it's just testing the shape there. We can then go back if the shapes are the same and just test the center of the distributions the test won't look at the means because we know that they're going to be affected by the outliers, hence we're choosing this test in the first place, but it will look at the medians, which is the middle point. So medians are much less, um, they're not sensitive to outliers in the same way that med, uh, mean values are. And we can just leave those fields the same. So all we're doing is switching over from distributions to medians and run. Again, we get the null hypothesis, the test it's giving us, the significance, and the decision is to rotate. So we have no evidence that there is any difference in the hand grip strength between the sexes. Now actually that's not what I was expecting because it did say in the paper that men should be a little bit stronger on average than women. So I guess if you were interpreting this you might want to think about the people who agreed to participate in the study. 
are the men weaker than you would expect them to be or are the women stronger than you would expect them to be so what has happened to equal out those groups and I don't know enough about this particular topic area but I would think that you could compare this with those European strength norms that they talk about and my guess is that it's the stronger women who are more likely to participate than the weaker men um, just based on what we all know of human psychology if you do want more information from these tests uh, in the non-parametrics you can usually just double click on this output here and it will give you an extra graph um, and a little bit more information if you need it but the interpretation always has to go back to the the design of the study in the context that you're doing it in so the non-parametrics are actually a little bit easier than the parametric tests there are fewer assumptions and you get some really helpful output there to do with your hypotheses